Alright, I'm going to pop this off. Keep track of where that is, and you're going to take these four screws loose and the same thing on the other side. Alright, once you get both of these off, take them off. Just note, because of this cable assembly here, uh, there is a little cutout right there. So when it comes time to putting these back together, they may look like le they're uh, the same, but this is the right side and the other side's the left. So you can once you get that off, you got to take uh, these screws and then the same thing on the other side and pull the fender off. We'll do that next. Okay, once those are off, the next step is we got to remove these bolts. So this one has the uh, cable coming out of it, and the other one is just a regular bolt. Need two wrenches for that. I'm going to put one on this side and then the other on the other side and uh, wrench them loose. Okay, so I've got them loose. Should be able to back this out a little bit. You can pull, because we took the fender out, if you need to, you can pull a little bit of the wiring harness out a little bit, give you some extra slack. And then you can back this up. Just need to get it out of the fork. And again, you need to pull a little. Just be mindful. In this case, I have the stem off. If you pull too much out, you're going to pull this assembly out, and it can disconnect if you if you still have your stem on. In my case, I don't, so it's okay. But you can even there is a little bit of slack. You can pull, you know. There's still there's still some stuff there. Pull that off enough, and you can get that out. That's all we need. That's all we need to get off. Uh, also, keep in mind because of where the fork is. If we back this off a little bit, you'll see there's these uh, spacers. You actually want the indent. That thing is on this side, not on that side, when you put it back together. All right, once you've got those uh, screws out, this is the hard part. We're gonna have to get between the tire and this uh, rim and uh, use a couple screwdrivers as pry bars and just pry it apart. I've also removed the nut on this side. Uh, you can use a um, rubber mallet or a dead blow mallet to help you get things going that way but you really need to pry this part off first. So I'm gonna get that started. All right, here I have it almost pried off. You can see there's a gap here. I just need to work it all the way around until I get about that loose, so I sort of break the seal. Uh, again, I can't do it one-handed, so we'll just have to wait till I get to that next step. All right, here I've got it all pried apart, sort of equally all the way around. I'm gonna leave those screwdrivers in there for a minute. Once I get it open, I can show you what's inside and you can have a better idea as to where you can lever and not lever it. Uh, but the next step now, the uh, stator is in the middle and then there's the hub on the, I mean, then there's the tire and the, the rim on the outside. And they're very strong magnets, so you're going to have to do a combination of grabbing this, pulling, and hitting with a rubber mallet so you don't damage the screws here to separate them. You might even need to stand on the rubber to try and hold uh, the, the tire down while you pull the stator out. All right, by hitting <coughs> hitting the side with the mallet, I was able to get this rim off and see what's going on. So you can see where the screws are. You don't want to damage this with your screwdriver when you were levering it off, but you can go inside of that, you know, a little past the screws and use that for levering. So now we have to pull this whole stator out uh, to get the tire on or at least what I want to do is take this whole rim off and then I can take it uh, to um, put the tire on. All right so this one I've taken it apart a couple times it's a little easier so I'm going to push down on this you can see the stator starts to come out but it snaps back in because of the magnet. So I'm going to step on that Pop that out a little bit and then pull. All right, now it's free. All right, that was the hard part. Now we just have to get this old tire off and put the new one on. You might be able to just pull the old one off by hand. Uh, we'll see if that works.
All right, so this one does not come off by hand, so I'm gonna use uh, levers. You could use a hot water trick to soften this up, uh, put the whole thing into a bucket of so uh, hot water. I'm gonna see if I can just lever it off because I, I don't really care if I damage the tire. Obviously, you want to be a little careful around the rim, but I think we can get it off just by stretching and pulling it towards us. All right, so I've got it right off. That's the old tire. Uh, I've done this one other time. I was able to pry it off just with my hands. This time I needed to tool. Last time I tried to put one of these on, and of course, it almost looked like it was the wrong size. I couldn't get this on. I did the trick of putting this in a bucket of hot water to soften it. Uh, even then, using levers and whatnot, I could not get this on for the life of me. Um, what I ended up doing was I figured I needed a jig. So while I was designing and printing the jig on a 3D printer, I took this piece of wood, I mean uh, this tire, and jammed pieces of wood into it, both this way and then this way, and just tried to spread it out. You know, you just hammer the pieces of wood in let it stretch and in the five six hours it took to design the part this thing was stretched out and i was able to get it on with the jig this time i'm going to do it just with the jig and the hot water trick so what we're going to do is take this tire put it in a bucket of hot water let it sit for a few minutes take it out and then um we're going to rub a little bit of the uh, dish soap in here and then this is the jig i printed which if you do it right, so the outer diameter is this diameter of this rim, right? And the inner diameter, I mean, the, uh, the it's slope, if you see here, it's got a slope. So what we can do is once this tire is sort of soft and a little bit lubricated, I can just take this and hammer it and just go around and hammer it and slowly stretch it out and it'll stretch it out evenly and then eventually it'll come off the jig and transition onto the rim. At least that's the hope. We'll see if it works. All right, I've let it soak in the water here for hot water for a few minutes. I'm gonna take it, put it onto this jig and we'll see what happens. Uh, I also, in this container here, have a little bit of dish soap. So I'm gonna run that along the inside of the bead the other important thing, um, I don't know if the tread really matters which way it goes, but uh, all the original OEM treads have the uh, this pointed in the direction of travel. So this would be the direction of travel for forward use. So you just got to remember looking at uh, this is the side that's going to be, you know, doesn't have the um, wire coming out of it. So you just have to play where does this go relative to the, the uh, fork. And uh, the way it should go is this should point this way when you put it on. So we're gonna, instead of putting it on this way on the jig, which would end up with it backwards, we're gonna put it on this way. Put it on the jig. And then uh, we just go around, tap it on pretty smooth so far all right so now you can see it's almost up to the diameter of that so I'm gonna put this on top of this line it up see if I can transition This is where the soap is both helping and hurting. It might make it slip back down, but it's also lubricating it enough that it won't move without having it really pound any one spot. Oh, 
See, I'm just about done. See, it's almost all the way on. All right, then I'll just give it a tap around. Good measure. I want to make sure that uh, that rim is flush with the tire. That went on pretty easily. And then all we have to do is uh, reassemble everything. Obviously the bearing is missing here. It's still on the, um, the stator on the back here. I replaced the bearings earlier. If you have the tire apart and uh, motor apart, this would be a good time to replace the bearing if you have any kind of problems with the bearing. Um, and that's it. We just have to go put everything back uh, the way we found it. And uh, again, remember when you're assembling this, oops, there we go, some screws. When this goes back on, you want to make sure that uh, little notch faces the rear. So this would be the right hand side. And uh, that's it. I'll put the STL file so you guys can print your own uh, tire jig.